Oh, what's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So, so in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that helps you create explosions inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so VDB Lab is an add-on from RBD Lab Studio. So RBD Lab, we've talked about in the past, is an add-on that helps you uh, simplify the physics setup process in your scenes. VDB Lab is an add-on that aims to do the same thing with VDBs. So basically what this is, this is a tool designed to help you create um, emitters and domains and all of the settings that you need in order to create different kinds of explosions. Okay, and so basically what this does is it kind of walks you through the process with their start to finish setting. So it's got a setting or a window on the right hand side of the page that you can use in order to quickly generate these explosions. And so what this tool does is it basically creates this linear process that you can follow to create different explosions. There are also some presets in here, which we can take a look at in a little bit, um, but it's got modules that it uses in order to uh, help you create emitters, flows, forces, domains. So basically the things that make up generating explosions inside of Blender, um, as well as a shader module that allows you to um, do different things with the way that these explosions are going to look. Note that you can go into the documentation. And so there's a user guide that you can use in order to get started with this tool. Okay, so now let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that this works. Um, so when you first install this, what you wanna do is you wanna go into your preferences and you wanna use the install button in order to install the VDB lab add-on that comes along with this. So that's going to be a zip file. Now note that in addition to um, installing VDB Lab, you're also going to get a file that contains a number of different presets. And so what I did is I took that folder and I just unzipped it. And that's gonna contain a few different files in here um, that you can use as kind of examples. You can also access them from directly within Blender. But once you've enabled this, what you can do is you can tap the in key on your keyboard, so the N letter key, you wanna click on VDB Lab. And within VDB Lab, notice how this is going to give you that list of different things that you can use in order to set up your explosions. Now, one thing to note is if you click on the presets right here and you add the presets folder, so I'm gonna select this folder, click on accept, then these explosions are going to show up as presets in here. You may just wanna start by importing a couple of these and taking a look at them because they can be a little bit confusing when you first get started. I will tell you right now, I am not an expert in creating these explosions either, um, but I am going to link to a couple different tutorials that they've done on their channel that's gonna show you a little bit more about how this works. Okay, and so the way that this works is you can come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and move Bonnie out of the way. It is kind of a good idea to keep a model in here just as reference for scale, um, just so you can have an idea of how big the explosion that's being created is. Um, so having a visual reference like this is a good idea. Plus, you know, I don't like deleting the default dog out of my scenes. But what you can do is you can start by adding a group and we're just gonna click on OK. Well, within that group, what you do is you add things called emitters. And so what those emitters do, and we'll go ahead and click OK, um, what those emitters do is they're going to emit the shapes um, that this is going to use in order to generate the VDB with the lighting and all of that. And so what you can do with these is you can scroll down and notice how there's different kinds of shapes in here, right? So this is going to be the shape of your explosion. So like if we look at this trails, for example, um, this would probably get layered on top of something else, but notice how you can click and drag on the timeline and you can see how um, the trails that this would generate um, are being kind of represented in the 3D space by actual geometry. So you can actually kind of visualize some things about this, right? So what you might do is you might start by just adding an icosphere right here and then playing around to some of the settings. And so when we play around to some of the settings, what that's gonna do is that's going to affect the shape of the object that's in here, like this, right? So you can adjust things like the density, you can adjust the radius of the shape that's being generated, other things like that. And so this in general is going to be the shape of the explosion that this generates. Um, so you can also come in here and add things like the noise, right? The more noise I have, the less round this is going to look. So again, we're just kind of adjusting um, the general shape of the emitter that is going to emit your actual explosion. And you can, you can jump in here and you can adjust some things about your animation, right? So remember, 
that you can click on this um, in order to kind of see what's going to go on with this animation. So in this case, for example, I might click on animate noise. When I click on animate noise, notice how this is actually moving this object around and that's going to be reflected in your explosion. And so again, I highly recommend that you go watch this VDB Lab gas explosion tutorial because they walk you through the exact settings that they're using. Um, I don't want to duplicate that video word for word. So we're just going to walk through a couple more of the things that kind of, uh, that kind of make this work, but you do want to go watch that tutorial. All right, so then I'm just gonna jump over into the flow emitters. I'm gonna add a flow to this one and you can set different kinds of flows in here, right? So this one, for example, I'm just going to set this as fire. So I just want this to act as a fire in here. So I'm gonna set this to fire. And so I'm gonna jump my volume emission up as well as my source up like this. And so we've just done some very basic setup in here. And there's a ton of things you can do. Like for example, you can use this to kind of like front load your animation. So if you want something to show up more in the beginning, you can use this curve to kind of set up the way that that works. But now what we would want to do is we would want to add a domain. The domain is basically the area that Blender is going to run the simulation in, right? So what I want to do is I just want to click on add domain and we're going to go ahead and we're going to select this group Actually, we're gonna select the emitters and click on OK. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate a domain inside of which this is going to run the simulation. And so you can adjust things like your resolution. And so you can adjust this so that the resolution is higher or lower. Um, I think I think that you want a higher resolution for your final, but you wanna leave it on something like 32 or 64 for this initial calculation um, so that this will come in here and this will simulate it without taking up too much of your processing space. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave this as is. I'm going to set this so that it only has a duration of maybe like 100. And note that there's a ton of stuff in here that I'm not even going to mess around with. Um, but you can mess around with like the gas, the fire, other things like that, like the flame smoke, the reaction speed. This is going to affect the way that all of those things are calculated. Okay, so if I run this, even with that domain, notice how nothing's showing up. Now, what you can do is you can click over in a viewport shading mode, and this is at least going to show you what this is going to generate. Um, in this case, I want to make sure, yeah, my flow type is set to fire. Now, one thing I've noticed about this is your fire might show up in shaded mode, but it's not going to show up in rendered mode. Um, again, unless I'm doing something wrong, which is very possible, um, without you adding shading. To this. So what I want to do is I want to click back into shading. I just want to add shading to the domain emitters. And then I'm just going to click on add shader to domain. And now we're just going to toggle over into cycles. So I'm going to pick a frame that I like and I'm going to jump over into cycles so we can see this rendered view. Notice how my fire's getting rendered. Now one thing about that is if you bring up the resolution in your domain, Right, so if you bring that up from 32 to something higher, then you're going to get a lot better effects. So that's kind of generally how you might set that up. And so one thing I really recommend, especially when you're trying to learn how to use this, is make use of those presets. So um, for example, I'm gonna go over to VDB Lab, and um, instead of adding an emitter manually, I'm just gonna click in here to my, um, to my presets, and I'm gonna select something. So like for example, say that I was to select um, this fairly simple, or let's go with this one right here because it has smoke in here as well. If you click on import preset, what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring this in with the domain with the domain set up the way that we want it to be. And it's got all of the settings set up. So you can see how they've kind of like stacked the different explosions and expansions on top of each other like this. So now if I was to play this, and again, I'm just using this in kind of like preview mode right now, but notice how you've got those three explosions that are in here. Well, you can actually go through and look at all of the different emitters and effects and see exactly how they've set these up. That is probably the downside right now is because there's only a little bit of documentation and a couple example models. Um, if something doesn't work, it can be a little bit hard to track that down, right? But um, if you look at these presets, you can see, okay, this is exactly how they set all these different things up. And then if I was to jump over into render mode and we're going to set this to cycles then you can see that this is going to render this out 
And one other thing to be aware of when you're working with this tool is obviously because this is doing simulations, it's a lot heavier. Um, so this can be kind of heavy on your machine. It might be, it, it'll be a lot faster if you have a strong machine in order to do this. Um, so just be aware that because of the number of calculations, this is a little bit of a heavy add-on. Okay, so that's where I'm going to end this video. I, I think there's a lot of promise in this add-on. I'm excited to see what people can do with it as they start adding more documentation and other things like that. I will link to that on this page, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about VDB Lab. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.